It's been a rainy January here in Southern California. We will begin our January episode with the harvest we made this month. Then take a tour of the California garden. We will show you the things to do in your garden this month. We will look at some cool gardening products and we will also announce our Mars Hydro LED grow light giveaway winner. Ready? And go. So let's begin with the harvest we made this month, beginning with beets. We were growing these beets, these are the red barren beets. And these were growing in the raised bed. And you can see here the soil is nice. It's a sandy loam soil, which is great for growing beets. And we were growing them quite close together. Not as close as they recommend in the square foot gardening method, but still relatively close. And you can see here the beet tops, they are just excellent. The beet roots have also formed quite well. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with the harvest of these beets. And these beets not only have great roots, but they also have very delicious and nice tasting tops. Bok choy. Also called pak choy or Chinese cabbage. We were growing these in a container. And you can see that these remain quite shallow rooted, wasn't producing a lot of large leaves. And this is the second method of harvesting the bok choy or the Chinese cabbage, which is to remove the entire plant. If you saw our last monthly episode, we harvested the bok choy by removing individual leaves. In this case, we are just removing the whole plant. And now we can use the container for growing something else. But you can see the harvest, the leaves are quite amazing. This is one of the easiest vegetables to grow. These greens taste great when they are stir fried with garlic and ginger. And you must try growing them in your home garden. Broccoli. One of my favorite vegetables to grow. And this month we got a lot of broccolis that were harvested from our raised bed. You can see here the broccoli growing on the raised bed had great leaves. And we had hoops and some covers protecting these broccoli plants. And that resulted in almost a perfect broccoli head. And the first raised bed that we have gets plenty of sun. And you can see that the broccoli head that we harvested from the first bed is significantly larger. And that's because this bed gets full sun almost the entire day. So it does grow some really good broccoli head. And you can see here one more quite a large head. This was probably the biggest head we harvested. And this was also growing in the first raised bed. So yes, sunlight does make a difference. The more sunlight you give your broccoli plants, the larger heads they're going to produce. And you can look at the broccoli head. It looks quite good, very delicious, fresh broccoli grown right in your garden. And you can see some side florets coming up. And this is the best part about broccoli. Once you harvest the main head, you can see that there are a lot of smaller shoots that are growing around the side. And they can be harvested after you harvest the main head. So continuing our broccoli harvest, we had so many plants growing in our raised bed. This is our third raised bed, which had the PVC hoops and the covers. And you can see the broccoli is quite good. And once the florets start growing on the sides, you can begin harvesting them anytime. And this is the best part about growing broccoli. You can keep harvesting the side shoots as they come. And you can see that each side shoot is quite a large broccoli. It's like individual pieces of the broccoli head, but growing on the sides. And they taste exactly the same, absolutely delicious. And some more harvest, you can see how nice the broccoli is. Beautiful looking heads, one of my favorite vegetables to grow. And one of my favorite vegetables to eat. So this time we did grow a lot of broccoli plants. And I'm really glad because we all love eating broccoli. Now I wanted to show you when it's too late to harvest your broccoli head. The one you see here is a little late, 
It's still perfectly edible. You can eat it. It tastes quite good. But you can see that the flowers have started forming just a little bit. So this is a good indicator on when you should harvest your broccoli. Just don't be too late. And moving on to carrots. We were growing these Kuroda carrots in this whiskey barrel container. And we did start harvesting some of these last month. But it was time to harvest all of them. Now this particular carrot variety is quite a popular variety for home gardeners because you can't find it in the grocery store. This is a very nice, sweet and crispy carrot that's not only easy to grow but gives you a lot of harvest in a very small space. And you can see the carrots, some of these have grown fully, some of them are a little small. But all in all, homegrown carrots are amazing. Don't worry too much about getting smaller carrots versus the grocery store. These carrots are absolutely fresh and absolutely delicious. So let's go ahead and harvest all the carrots now. The carrots are of varying sizes, which is perfectly fine. So once we harvested all the carrots, this is how our harvest looks like and they look quite good. Cauliflower. We were growing cauliflowers in our raised bed, the third raised bed that also had the broccoli plants growing. And you can see here the cauliflowers are some of the best cauliflowers we've grown. The heads are almost perfect. And once again, don't be disheartened if your heads are smaller than this. It's perfectly fine. As long as you're getting good looking cauliflowers from your garden, you're doing okay. And just look at these cauliflowers. They're just absolutely fresh and amazing. And I think I just love all brassicas, you know, cauliflower, cabbage, all of them taste quite good. And this is one more cauliflower head. It's looking quite good. And we did harvest a lot of heads of cauliflower from just one raised bed. So all in all, I was quite happy with the harvest. Cilantro. Most of the cilantro we harvested was from our green stock planter. And if you haven't seen my review on the green stock planter, please do check it out. You can see how easy it is to grow herbs in this green stock planter. And cilantro is one herb that we use quite a lot. So you can see here we are harvesting the cilantro from the green stock planter. And this is just absolutely fresh cilantro. Something that we use a lot. So I've started planting a lot of cilantro so that we can harvest them fresh and then use them directly in the kitchen. Guava. We had this one guava tree and after the Santa Ana winds last month blew all the guavas and the leaves away, we were still left with one guava which we harvested. Now this is a tropical guava, absolutely delicious guava. The seeds are quite soft and they're very less. So you can see here once the guava is cut open, how beautiful it looks and it tastes absolutely crunchy and delicious. Kishu mandarins also called as cuties, are small mandarins that are easy to peel, taste absolutely sweet and delicious. So these are one of my favorite mandarins to grow and kids love these mandarins. They're just absolutely delicious and easy to peel. They have very soft and thin skin. So all in all a great citrus to grow in your garden. Meyer lemons. We had one Meyer lemon tree growing. And this tree was just planted in the ground from a container. So we did harvest one Meyer lemon from this tree. And Meyer lemons don't become huge. They are dwarf or semi-dwarf trees. So if you're looking for a lemon that is not too tart, then Meyer lemon is a good option for you. Mustard. We were growing the southern giant curled mustard. Also called the Indian mustard in our raised bed and we just had two plants and just look at the size of these leaves this plant produces huge leaves as long as you have good organic material in your soil this plant will keep producing huge leaves like these and even with just two plants we were able to harvest a lot of mustard greens now if you go to your grocery store you can see that these leaves are sold in bunches of two or three and you can just see in comparison how much mustard you can harvest from your own garden very easily. So if you like greens, you like salads or just like cooking mustard greens, this is a great mustard to grow in your home garden. 
And after harvest, we cook it with spices. Mustard tastes amazing when mixed in with spinach and cooked in with spices. So that's what we do with our mustard. Onions. The bunching onions or spring onions were growing quite well in the raised bed. And you can see here the spring onions, they have smaller bulbs, but these bulbs have a lot of nutrition value. They have way more nutrition than onion bulbs. And it's best to eat them raw. They have a nice mild flavor. So most of the time we use spring onions as a salad on the side. Just eat them raw and they taste quite good. So I will be harvesting these bunching onions or spring onions slowly from our raised beds to make space for the summer vegetables. And you can see here the harvest, the onions look quite good. Radish. We were growing the Minovese radish or the winter radish in raised beds. And you can see here the radishes have become quite long and we started harvesting them. Now the Minovese radish can get quite long. So it's best to grow them in raised beds like we have done here. But we've also grown them in containers with good success. But when you're growing them in raised beds, it might be a little difficult to pull them out. You can see here this radish was so huge. It took quite some work to pull it out. And here's one more huge radish. So these radishes are quite big in size. And here are a few radishes that we harvested. And this is how our harvest looks like. These are excellent looking radishes. And if you're having difficulty harvesting these radishes, there's a little trick you can use. You can just water the area quite thoroughly where the radish is growing. And by watering, you loosen up the soil. And now you can easily pull out these radishes without a lot of damage. So all in all, just one row of radish that we sowed yielded us a lot of radish. And there are still some remaining in the ground or in the raised bed that we will be harvesting next month. So you can see the radishes, they are quite big, quite nice, and these are winter radishes, so they do take longer to mature. But once you plant them, they will give you a lot of radish roots that you can use for a variety of dishes. And we kept harvesting these radishes over and over again from this raised bed, and we still have a few left. You can see here after washing the radish roots look amazing and the greens are very delicious too. So all in all it's a great option to grow winter radish in your home garden if you haven't already started. Spinach. We were growing the pale green spinach variety and we started harvesting the spinach leaves from the raised bed, our first raised bed. And you can see how large the leaves are. Now once again, if you have adequate organic material, we added a lot of manure and worm castings into the soil for these nice huge leaves that you're seeing here. And this is an heirloom variety, it's an organic variety that you can keep growing and once the seeds are formed, you can save the seeds and plant them again and again. So overall I was quite happy with the quality of the spinach plants. And this year we did grow a lot of spinach. I think last year we didn't have a lot of spinach and we always thought we needed more spinach. But this year we did grow a lot of spinach and the results are quite good as you can see. And as you know spinach is quite nutritious, it's quite healthy. And once again you can see that the first raised bed has more spinach leaves now. So after you harvest the spinach leaves they will keep coming back. So the cut and come again method of harvesting works very well for spinach. Now we were also growing spinach on our third raised bed, right next to our tomatoes. And you can see that these spinach leaves are also very nice. They were a little more tender than the one in the first raised bed. And that's because these are grown in a little bit of shade. So the tomato plants provide shade for these spinach plants. And that's why these spinach leaves are quite tender and quite nice. And once again in a few days you can see that the leaves have grown back. And we kept harvesting spinach leaves from this raised bed over and over again for quite some time. So whether you're growing spinach or Swiss chard, make sure you grow some nice healthy greens in your garden so that you can have a continuous supply of greens. And this is how our spinach harvest looks like. Once again, quite a lot of spinach from just a small space.
Moving on to tomatoes now. We were growing this husky cherry red tomato in a container and this was just a volunteer plant that came up and you can see it did produce a lot of tomatoes. Now the husky cherry red tomato is slightly larger than a regular cherry tomato and also produces quite a lot of tomatoes. We then moved on to harvesting the tomatoes that were growing in the raised bed. So we had multiple tomato varieties. We had the Bonnie Select, the Salsa Tomato and a few others. And you can see these tomatoes, they grow quite big even during winters. So this bed does get quite a lot of sun during the winters. And you can see the difference. The tomatoes are quite large, quite nice. And they also did turn red on the vine. Not completely red, but red enough. And that was because we had quite a lot of warm days in January. So January was quite a mixed month with a few hot days, a few very cold days and a lot of rain. But you can see the tomatoes here. We got a lot of tomatoes and there are still plenty of tomatoes on the plants. So I think we should be able to continue harvesting these tomatoes into February which is always good to see. Always nice to harvest tomatoes during winters. Now if your tomatoes don't ripen on the vine, don't worry. You can remove them and put them in a container at home and they will ripen on the shelf and they taste quite good as well. So this is the kind of tinge you want to see. You want to see a golden red tinge on your tomato, which is when you can ripen them indoors. And this works quite well for all tomatoes. And you can see gorgeous tomatoes Beautiful harvest even during winters. And now let's take a tour of our garden, beginning with the raised beds. In the first bed, we have our carrots growing. These are the burpee A1 carrots growing quite well. Our beefsteak tomato plant has grown quite tall now. It's taking over the trellis. We have a lot of broccoli plants here that we harvested the broccoli heads from. And we have some kohlrabi plants. The kohlrabi heads are also getting bigger. And this is the area where we harvested a lot of radish from. There are still a few remaining. And then we have our onion plants. We have a lot of onions, bunching onions, regular onions, all growing in this first raised bed. And all of them are doing quite good. Moving on to the next raised bed, we have potatoes. These are the potatoes that were sprouting in our pantry area. So I just planted them and they're doing quite well. We have some Brussels sprouts. These are two Brussels sprouts plants that we just planted and then we have a lot of garlic the elephant garlic on the side which is doing quite well and the onions you can see all the onions that we planted and then we just added some purple sprouting broccoli really looking forward to harvesting those and then we have some romeo carrots this is a new carrot variety we are trying In the next raised bed, we have some ground cover plants and mostly brassicas. Cauliflower, cabbage, broccoli, romanesco. You can see this romanesco that's just popping up. Romanesco is one of my favorite brassicas. Extremely delicious. And we have our mustard greens that have grown back since we harvested them. A lot of broccoli plants. And some cabbages as well, as you can see. Beautiful looking cabbages. The heads are firming up now. And this is another Romanesco plant. Once again, beautiful looking plant, beautiful looking vegetable. There's one more. And now moving on to the next raised bed, we have some kohlrabi plants. These are the white kohlrabis and they're developing quite good bulbs now. The kohlrabi bulbs are, have become quite large. 
should be ready for harvest quite soon. And we have some more brassicas along the side. And then we have our tomatoes. These are the tomato plants still growing strong. Now they do have some brown leaves during the winters, but overall they're still doing okay. They're still producing flowers and they're still producing a lot of tomatoes. You can see a lot of tomatoes from the perspective of the winter season. These are still significantly good tomatoes. And we have some more mustard greens here. We just had some extra plants that we planted. Followed by a couple of rows of radish, different varieties of radish. And finally the spinach plants on the side that we harvested a lot of spinach from this season. And you can see the tomato plants once again, producing quite a lot of tomatoes and trying to use up the trellis. And in the final raised bed, we have some purple kohlrabi plants. These plants have taken off from the previous month. If you remember, we had to transplant all of these when harvesting our sunchokes. We have some onions. These are the bunching onions and some shallots. And right next to that, we have the purple potatoes that are now growing quite well. We have a couple of brassicas, broccoli and cauliflower. And finally, we have our Romanesco. If you look at the Romanesco vegetable, it's producing quite a nice head. And we have three of them growing. I'm really looking forward to harvesting this. These are absolutely amazing and absolutely delicious. We do have one cabbage that's growing on the side. And if you've not already noticed, we have a new trellis for our ivy gourd plants or the tindora plant. You can see we just use three EMT conduits. And we attached two concrete remesh panels between them and just zip tied it to form this really beautiful trellis. So I've explained how to make this kind of a trellis in my earlier videos, but you can see how easy it is to get a beautiful trellis. And that completes the tour of our raised bed garden. We do have some other updates which I will share, beginning with our 3 in 1 apple tree. Now we just got this 3 in 1 apple tree. And all of these apple varieties are low chill, which means you can easily grow them in places like Irvine. They will produce flowers and fruit. But what was surprising was this plant already started flowering and it's just January. So I don't know if it's too early. Let me know in the comments box below if you think that this is too early for apple to flower or is it normal? Now in the containers, we don't have a lot of updates, but we are growing some beets. We just added some beet plants into this container. And we are growing some potatoes. These are multiple colored potatoes in this one container where we use the deep planting method. And in these two containers, we are growing the same potato variety but using two different techniques. One using straw and compost and the other one using regular potting mix. Now which one will perform better? Only time will tell. I also wanted to share our seven tier green stock planter. This is a new product that green stock has launched. And I'm super impressed by how it performs. This has 42, yes, 42 slots for growing. The height of each slot is smaller than the regular green stock planter, but you can see how nice it looks and you can grow a lot of plants in this vertical container. Now also wanted to provide a quick update on our regular green stock planter that's doing quite well. We have some broccoli growing. You can see a couple of broccoli heads here. And you can see how nicely all the plants are growing. We have a cauliflower. And this should just give you an idea on what all you can grow in your green stock planter. You can grow pretty much anything. The slots are large enough to accommodate any plant. And the winter garden is no different. You can see we are growing a lot of winter vegetables, plus onions and cilantro, a lot of herbs. And all in all, I'm super happy with the progress of our green stock planter. And now let's look at the things for you to do in your garden this month. And today we're going to take a look at how to maintain your green stock planter. Now after the summer crops were done, it was time to clean up the planter and then reclaim some of the potting mix. 
And although I'm using the green stock planter here, this is just a general guideline on how to reuse container soil for your containers in your garden. But as you can see here, what I wanted to show you was how nicely the root systems have developed in this green stock planter. And this was using a custom potting mix that we had created using peat moss, perlite and compost and worm castings. And we're going to be keeping our pepper plant for overwintering. And you can see here nicely developed roots. We'll just keep a little bit of soil with the pepper plant and keep it in a small pot and keep it separate in the greenhouse. And then you can break up the remaining soil. You can see all these roots here. Just collect all these roots and put them in your compost bin. And once you finish doing that, you'll be left with some good quality potting soil. But remember, the plants that were growing here have taken up most of the nutrients in the soil. So our next step is to add back these nutrients. And you can do this for any kind of potting soil, you know, when you're growing your plants in containers. We're first going to be adding some garden lime. This will add some beneficial calcium in the soil. And the pH doesn't really matter here because we're using peat moss, which is acidic. Vermiculite is the next thing we will be adding to this potting mix. This will help the potting mix retain more moisture. And hence will require less watering. And we will also add some worm castings. These are the Vermistera worm castings. These are extremely high quality worm castings. And you can get yours at vermistera.com. And then we'll be adding some all-purpose organic garden fertilizer in the soil. And the pH should not matter because we are already using a lot of peat moss, which is acidic to start with. And once again, we just mix it up thoroughly. And then we are ready for the next step. So the next step is to thoroughly wash the green stalk planter. Your container should be thoroughly clean. Now a lot of people go on the extreme and use bleach and other chemicals to wash it. I think just using a garden hose and just hosing out all the remaining soil and spider webs etc is good enough. The next step is to add back the potting mix that we just amended. And once you add back the potting mix, I usually just press it lightly so that it settles in well. And you need to fill up the soil all the way to the top. Now as far as the watering disc goes, this also will have some kind of dirt or lime and other things attached to it. So you can just use a scrubber. I just use my hands to clean it this time. But you can use a sponge or any kind of a mild scrubber to clean this. And then wash it thoroughly. And this will ensure that if there are any holes that are blocked on the watering dust, that they will get cleared. And we are now ready for planting. We went ahead and planted all our winter veggies like cauliflower, broccoli, cilantro, onions. Lot of veggies in this green stock planter. So this is how you refresh and renew your green stock planter after the growing season. And you can see here all the veggies have been planted now. And you do that for each tier. And you end up with all these plants that you see here. So I would suggest doing this twice a year at the end of the season. And this will make sure that your green stock planter is performing at its optimum efficiency. You can see here the cilantro has grown back very well. So has the cauliflower and the broccoli as well as the onions. And we started harvesting our cilantro from the green stock planter. As you can see, beautiful looking cilantro that's growing in this green stock planter. Now again, you can use this technique for any kind of container. I'm just using the green stock container because I just love this container. It lets me grow 30 plants in about 2 feet of space. And the plants grow very well. I've grown almost every type of plant here in this green stock planter. And they all seem to do a good job. You can see the broccoli here. We're harvesting this broccoli from this green stock planter. And the broccoli head is quite good. Very delicious broccoli. Extremely easy to grow in a green stock planter. And here's one more broccoli head. 
And even after we harvest the main head, this broccoli plant will keep forming side heads or side buds which we will be able to harvest. And now let's move on to the gardening product section and we'll talk about the Vipar Spectra XS1500 LED grow lights and there are a lot of good features of this grow light that you can see on your screen and if you remember in our November monthly video we did an unboxing and setup of this grow light I wanted to see how this grow light performed on growing cabbages and mustard as you see here so I wanted to make sure that the plants grew in a good way that they were getting enough light from this grow light and you can see the progress of the plants. They have done pretty well. So all in all, I think this is a great quality grow light. And here you can see the cabbages have grown quite big. In about a month, the plants have grown quite big, quite nice, which means that they're getting the full spectrum of the light they're expected to get. And here is the progression. Beautiful looking plants. They're growing very well. So all in all, I'm quite happy with the performance of the Vipar Spectra XS1500 grow light. And here are the details on how to buy this product. You can use coupon code XSCA Garden to get 8% off on the XS series. So, if you like grow lights, please continue to watch the product reviews that we do so that you can make an informed decision on which grow light performs better than the other. And then buy a grow light that fits into your budget and your needs. In today's video, we will take a look at Pico, a garden in your palm a compact indoor growing device which has a grow light and a self-watering container all in one. And this is a sponsored review. This product was sent to me by the company. And if you look at the package, it was quite a compact package. And by looking at the package, I knew that this product is a very compact product. So here is the Pico timer. Now since it came separate from the product, I'm assuming that this has to be bought separately when you order it. We have a nice instruction manual and a welcome note. And as you can see, this product was separate than the other timer that was there with the package. And we'll shortly get into all those details. Now the box is actually extremely small. And I was surprised that they could pack in so many items into this one small box. So let's open up the box and see what's inside. So inside the box you have some quick start guides, a user manual and the actual Pico growing device. And it does come with a lot of mounting accessories and also a funnel to water. And if you actually open up the Pico itself, there are a lot of other accessories even inside that. So the way they package this item is quite good. You can see that the USB cables, which is used to power the Pico, the growing light, is also there. And here is the Pico timer. And this basically lets you automate your growing light times. And the instruction manual is okay. It's not as detailed as I thought it would be, but still gets the job done. And here is the USB cable and the wall plug that's used to power the Pico. And you can see here the heat sink on the top. This is an aluminum heat sink. And at the bottom, there is this area where you add the potting mix. This is a food grade BPA free plastic that you can grow your food in, which is good to see. So all you do is take some potting mix and fill in the bottom portion of the container with any kind of potting mix. We are using cocoa core here. And then you can either sow seeds or you can use transplants. So here we are going to be using a transplant. This is a cilantro plant that we got as a transplant. And we're going to be planting this in the Spico. Now at the first instance when I started adding the potting media, I quickly realized that the size of the container that holds the soil, the potting mix, is extremely small. Now I know the company wanted to design this as a compact device, but this is extremely small. I think an extra, maybe an inch on all sides would have made this growing media a lot more useful. 
and this is the funnel that goes on the side. Now the funnel design is extremely strange. Uh, first of all, I had a tough time just fixing the funnel onto the side. And I believe that's because it only fits in one way. That's what I think. And again, once again, very strange design because the funnel is supposed to hold water on the sides. But if you look at the lip of the funnel, it's extremely narrow. And while you fill water, whoever designed the fill line, the minimum and maximum fill line, well, I'm sorry to say, but this is a really poor design. It's almost impossible to see the fill lines when you're adding water. Now, even from the front, it's very hard to see the fill line. But when you're adding water, it's almost next to impossible. It's like looking at a dark line against a dark background. So really poor job on the design for the fill line. I hope you can improve this in a future product version. Now, once you add the water to the max finish line, you can remove the funnel. And this is the Pico timer. So basically the timer goes in first and then that connects to the power outlet. And finally the USB cord then connects to the Pico. And here is the USB connection. It's a USB-C connection, which is good to see. And all you do is plug in the USB-C connection. It's the same connection that you would use to charge your phone and many other devices these days. And then this is the Pico timer. This is how the connection goes to the Pico timer. And then this just goes to the, the wall plug on the outlet. So pretty easy to set up. And as soon as you turn it on, you can see that the lights have come on and this looks beautiful. I think the overall product design is quite nice. It's a nice, compact, beautiful looking, modern looking accessory for your home or your office or wherever you want to keep it. And as far as the timing for the LED goes, there are some instructions on how to reset the timer, which are almost impossible to understand. And the manual has some typos as well. So I just left the timer on the default settings just to see what time the lights come up and go. But it's best to keep the lights on during the night time. Now after a day or so, I thinned out the plants and now we have one plant and I was still having a challenge just supporting this plant. But in just a couple of days, the plant grew stronger and then it started growing as expected. And to add fertilizer, I was using a liquid fertilizer. So you can just use the funnel to add the liquid fertilizer into the reservoir and that should do the job of growing your plants over a period of time. Now while the Pico may be a great option for growing herbs like mint or cilantro, I think a lot of users are going to be using the Pico just as a growing medium for house plants to grow house plants inside their homes or their office area. And for that purpose, I'm going to show you how to plant this house plant, like this polka dot house plant that you see. And this plant is a very small plant. It's suited for containers like Pico, which are really small. And this plant grows very well indoors under lights. So all we do now is add some potting mix. This time we used a mix of peat moss and perlite with a slow release fertilizer. And you can see here that does a much better job of keeping the potting mix not so moist while still allowing the medium to wick water and let your plants grow. So I would suggest using a potting mix that's mixed in with coco core or peat moss and some perlite. And once you plant, you can see that it looks quite good. And I'll wait for the timer to turn on when the time comes. And remember to water your plant once you've planted it. Once again, you can see the funnel design. It just holds like a couple droplets of water. So if they had just given about half a centimeter of lip for the funnel on each side, it could just hold water and direct it to the reservoir instead of spilling all over the place. You can look at the Pico. The plant looks beautiful in this. It's quite a nice compact planter for your home or for your office. So overall, what do I think about the Pico? Well, this looks like a first iteration of the product. And although the product is okay, I don't think I can recommend this for a lot of my viewers, simply because it does have some shortcomings. I think the growing area is small. There are some design issues with the fill level, the funnel. But overall, it's still a decent product. 
So if you're just planning to add some decor or beauty to your home or to your office, then by all means go ahead and get one. And I will provide the product links as well as some affiliate links in the video below and the comments box below. And now for the Mars Hydro Grow Light giveaway. Our winner for the Mars Hydro Grow Light giveaway is Barb Klein. You can see the winner on your screen here. And I will contact you by replying to your comment so that we can get started with getting this grow light over to you. Congratulations to Barb and thank you to everyone who participated. Keep watching our episodes for more giveaways in the future. Ready? Go! Ready, go! Tesla, leave it, leave it. No, leave it. So there we have it folks, that was our January 2021 episode for California Gardening. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, do give us a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button for all future updates. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.